As animators, we want to make our job as efficient as possible. And a lot of that has to do with organization and how you set up your workflow to quickly get your animation that you're creating into a viewable format so that you can get feedback and you can be building your project as you go along. So I'm going to walk you through how to use your animatic as the baseline for creating the animation and also be doing your editing along the way. Here I have an animatic made by one of my students, Bella Possidente. This animatic is really well thought out. It has good staging and good timing. Essentially, B can bring in the individual panels into an animation program and create the animation directly from them using that, that timing as reference. Now, in order to help us stay motivated and to keep track of all of the different steps that need to happen to make a complete piece of animation, I really suggest that once you have your animatic, you go through and create what's called a shot list. So a shot list really involves numbering each different shot. So if you go through the animatic, you know, here we have the first shot of the lighthouse, kind of an establishing shot. Then we have a wide shot that is shot number two. And then we get to introducing our character, shot number three, it's a walk cycle, pans up. So every time the camera changes, it's a new shot. In each shot, there's different things that need to be accomplished, right? So take this shot number one, right? First, you have to draw the background. You have to put all of the layers in the background and create the artwork. Then you have to do the animation of the light going around and create that cycle. Uh, so you would do rough animation and then you would do maybe some line work and some cleanup in order to make that shot look finished. So when you make your shot list, you want to list all of the shots in a column. And then you want to think about your particular process. Like what is the process that you are going to need to get this from animatic stage to final animation? All of those are the steps along the way that you need in order to call this shot complete. Now, probably you need to do that for every single shot, right? Every shot needs a background. Every shot's gonna need those keyframes. Every shot's gonna need the line work and the color to make it finished. Um, every shot's gonna need sound. And so what you end up with in your shot list is this little grid. So with this grid, what you can do is you can decide how you're going to work. Are you going to go through and make all of your backgrounds at once? Or are you going to go shot by shot and do background, keyframes, rough animation, final cleanup, and call that one done and then move on to the next shot? Now, of course, you don't need to go in order. And one of the things that I would suggest is to start grappling with some of your more difficult shots first. Those are the shots that are going to take a lot more time and you're going to need more feedback. So having those scheduled at the beginning of your workflow when you have a lot of energy and you're excited and you have time to give them to people to get, get feedback is going to um, make those shots better in the long run. If you leave them till the end, then they get rushed, right? Or they Or you get super stressed out about them because they're really hard. And the good thing about doing the hard stuff first is that actually once you have put yourself through the hard stuff, well, then all you have left is easy shots. And you're like, okay, I totally got this. I can do this. And you can kind of power through the rest of the shots when time starts to get a little bit crunched towards the deadline. And it always does. No matter what, when you're approaching a deadline, it's always a rush. So you should just know that that's coming and plan for it accordingly. So a shot list really becomes your roadmap to the production. And you can check things off. And every time you get to check something off, that makes you feel good, right? Like we love having to-do lists and being able to cross things off or check them off. And so it gives you that little hit of dopamine being like, all right, I'm making progress. And then it also gives you kind of the big picture of the whole production of like what you have left to do. And it will help you plan your time a little bit better. 
let's say we've got some animation that we've finished um, and we've done it in another program like uh, Photoshop or in this case, Krita, and we want to see how it's working all together. So you want to start with bringing your animatic into a video editing software. So here I'm using Premiere and I've just dropped in the animatic layer. And what I'm going to do is as I finish certain shots, I'm going to render them out from the program that I'm working in. And then I'm just going to drop them directly over the corresponding shot in the animatic. And um, let's say I have a few more that are finished. Those also can be dropped in. And even though the animation is not totally finished in all of these, uh, we're seeing how the editing is working, right? And we have a chance to kind of look at the animation in progress. And we're also editing as we go. At the end, all of these little gaps are going to be filled up and you're going to have your complete animation finished. So it's important to note that you don't have to have your shot 100% finished before you put it in here. Looking at partially finished work can be super helpful as you're analyzing your animation and getting feedback. So if you have something that's partially done, just drop it in, see how it's looking, and then you can go and make adjustments later. So one thing that happens along the way through this process is sometimes you may find that your timing is going to change from the animatic. So here we are in the next round of updates and we have a little bit more color in this first shot and um, the things are looking pretty good in the second shot. And now we have this nice pan with the character that is actually there with this nice walk cycle, right? So if you look back at the animatic of this shot with the pan, right? We, um, it, it was a little bit different. There was like a pan down and then a pan across. And then we cut to the long shot of the lighthouse right here. And during the animation process, what B has discovered is that this scene just needs more time, right? Since it's a walk cycle, we can kind of extend this out without really creating much more work for ourselves. B has the cut happening to the long shot actually right about here, right? So if we turn this off and look back at the animatic, what we need to take note of is that, well, the timing of the rest of this stuff is going to change a little bit. So if that's happening along the way, that's totally no big deal. You just make the adjustments to your animatic and shift things over a little bit if necessary. Maybe you need to shorten a scene. Maybe you need to make it longer. But you know that after this particular shot where the light bulb shatters, then we need to move to this next shot where we see the reaction of the character and the character running to the next stage, right? And so we can just kind of shift that bit over so that it lines up with the end of our other shot. And then we're back in alignment with the timing. Once you have all of your shots put in here and edited together, um, then you're already set to do a little bit of sound editing. So this is the method that I would suggest you take. It will keep you sane as you are trying to keep track of all the different things going on in animation and hopefully aid you in the process of creating some finished animation.